when I was a child, um, my sister and I were like the exact opposite kinds of children. So I was the kind of kid, my mom could open the door and say, Jake, go play. And I would find a quiet spot in the, in the yard and I would safely play for hours and hours and hours. And then eventually my mom could open the door again and go, Jake, come inside. And I would come inside. <laughs> my sister was the kind of child who, if you cracked the door like one inch, she would burst out, run into the street and get run over by a car. <laughs> we were different kinds of children. I didn't need structure to keep me safe, and I still don't as a writer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that kind of kid. I didn't need structure to keep me safe. Throw me out into the universe, I will find a safe place, and I will play there and have a really good time. But not everyone is built like that. If you do that to my sister, you will not have my sister very long. And so part of being a writer is being a good creative parent to your inner child, right? To your little writer child. And part of being a good parent is understanding that not all writer children are the same. That your writer child and my writer child are, might be very, very different children. Um, now, what some people would do if they have a writer child like me, they'll be like, good job, Jake, you're the good boy. And then you find a nice little cage and you stick Karina in the cage, right? You're like, now she is safe. Right? Do you know how we do this as writers? We do this with outlines, right? Rigid, I planned every single thing, now Karina cannot get hurt, <laughs> right? I've got the perfect log line and it's teacher approved so I know I can sell it, right? And I got the perfect outline and every detail is planned out and I know I can sell it. I've written the perfect treatment and every, I've got little check marks and I know I can do it and now all I need to do is add dialogue and I should have a movie, right? And that's like putting poor Karina in a cage. So what do you do if you've got a kid like Karina? You've got to create a safe space for Karina to play or she's going to get hit by a car. So some of us, if we don't have some structure, we find that our movies don't go anywhere, right? Your main character is like, la, 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 right? Just running all over the place, but not, not going anywhere. Um, and we start to get panicked as the parent, and we get abusive. We're like, stop running around! Get out of here! Right? This is how we become with our inner child. And then the child starts rebelling and so suddenly we have writer's block and we're like, I wonder why I don't want to write today. So instead of putting Karina in a cage, leave that to her older brother. <laughs> instead of putting Karina in a cage, what Karina needs is a fence. Now, it does not need to be, you know, an electric nuclear charged fence. And you want to build the fence as wide as you possibly can. In other words, you want the child to have as much room to play as she can and still be safe. Okay? Only you know how much room you can create for your, for your inner writer child. Right? For some of you, that might be like a small padded chasselle, <laughs> right? But still better than a cage. But hopefully you can give them some options. You can give them some room to play and explore. So, you know, over here might be, here's the sandbox. And over here might be, that doesn't really look like a swing set, but you get the point. There's a swing set, you know, and over here there's a seesaw, right? And over here, here's a Barbie castle. I was not an art major. <laughs> You guys get the idea? And what you find is if you let Karina go play in the backyard as opposed to just let her run out into the universe, I wish our backyard had been this cool, it wasn't. <laughs> but if you let her run out around and play in the backyard, for a while, if you have an inner writer who's got the personality of my sister, you're gonna notice that she bounces from thing to thing to thing. Three seconds on the seesaw and then she's gonna run to the Barbie house, right? But what you'll notice is eventually there's gonna be something that she's like, I really like the seesaw. 
And suddenly, all by herself, without any work from you, without any screaming, without any yelling, without any, any cages or rules, you'll find Karina playing for hours and hours and hours on that seesaw. In fact, the only way you can stop a child like Karina from playing on the seesaw is by saying, you must play on the seesaw. In which case, she will start to run. If you give your inner writer enough room to play, they will find the area of, of interest. And this is true with almost any child. And every once in a while, you might even notice that they climb the fence. And if they do, just like my mom was always watching from the window, if they climb the fence and they're here on the outside, you can just kind of keep an eye on them and make sure they're, they're in eye shot. This is what I mean when I say you want to create the biggest fence that you possibly can. Enough that, that your writer child can feel free to play and not creatively limited like we were talking about. So they, they can start to choose the real areas of interest. Then as you get into later drafts, you start to bring your editing brain to your, parent, your parental brain to the equation. And you start to go, hey, Karina, notice you were doing an awesome job there on that seesaw. Huh, have you thought about something? Is there a different way you could use the seesaw? Have you thought about doing something like this? Is there a way we could have more seesaw in act three? You can start to play with the child and encourage them to explore that one area more deeply. Does that make sense? So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for, if you're a writer that needs an outline, great. But don't outline every scene. It will never be good enough and it will never be exciting. Give yourself just enough turning points that you're like, okay, there's a way through the forest. Okay, there's a fence to keep me safe. And then let that inner child out to play.